Hi, welcome back to Aristothink. Today I'm going to talk to you about the Pascal Triangle, an amazing magical triangle which was not invented by Blaise Pascal. Did you know that? We're going to see who started this, it's like thousands of years before him. Well, do you also know that this triangle is known with other names across the globe? Of course. The Pascal Triangle is a Western name. On the East uh, part, of, part of the world is known with different names. Let's see all those names. Do you also know all those properties? I'm going to show in this video 90 properties, very simple ones, from this triangle. Now, how did this all start? Well, it all started in India. 300 years before Christ by a mathematician called Arkarya Pingala. He was just studying poetry composition when he started creating this amazing triangle. Back then, they did not know much about this triangle. And as time goes by, in different countries, as different mathematicians started, started to work with this triangle, they started to discover new properties and, of course, the triangle received the name of that mathematician for that particular country. And that is why there are other names of this beautiful triangle. And let's see a few of them. It's called the Staircase of Mount Meru in India. And it started on the 10th century. Now, it's the Kayun Triangle for Iran. Then, later, it passed through China called Yangshui Triangle. Then, finally, on the 1400s, it started to appear in Europe. And then, for instance, in Italy, it's known as Tartaglia's Table. And then, finally, finally, on the 17th century, Blaise Pascal did something that no other mathematician did. He just took this triangle and started to dedicate all his work to analyze 100% this triangle and gathering all information that all previous knowledge from all previous mathematicians and he started to make a huge uh, um, understanding and he started to solving probability problems and that is why Blaise Pascal did an amazing job he took everything that everybody ever found about this triangle and started to solve real problems in life very deep problems and that is the story of the, uh, this amazing triangle. Now, let's go to the triangle itself. Well, the triangle itself, it's made with ones. It, of course, it is a triangle. Can you see? I just made a few numbers. I, we're going to complete this table. And how do you assemble this? Always ones on the sides. Always, always. Now, the first is one. Then, we have one and one. Now, we're going to, because those are two laterals, all the sides must be ones. Now, we have a number here. 1 plus 1 makes a 2. You see? You add that with that and you make a 2. Again, 1 and 2 makes a 3, makes a 3. 1 and 3 makes a 4. 3 and 3 makes a 6, makes a 4. Can you see? And can you see the symmetry? 3, 1, 6, 4, 1. Now, 1 and, one and 4 makes a 5, makes a 10, 10. 5, 6, 15, 20. Now, I left a few in blank so we can put it together. Can you see? Look, but we're going to use symmetry here. 1, 7, 21, 35. Those two must be 35. Now again, 1, 8. This one must be 8. 28. So this one must be 28. Now, 9, 36. This last one is going to be 36. Okay, this is Pascal's triangle. And now see now some properties. The first one I want to see. Oh, one more thing. When you do about the Pascal triangle, the row is start on zero. So row zero, row one, row two, row three, row four, row five. And when you go to each element, this is zero element, the first, the second, the third. We start, we start by counting zero, one, two, three, the positions, and the positions on the row, zero, one, 
two, three, four, so on. Now let's see the triangle numbers. Triangular numbers are this. We start with a dot. Then the next one we're going to put a um, base below it, trying to form a triangle. So it's going to be this, agree? Three. So the first number is one. The second on the sequence is three. Now we're going to put um, an even lower base. And now if this base is with two, the next one is going to be with three, agree? So we have this one from the previous pattern. But now we're going to put another one. One, two, three. And now we have one, two, three, four, five, six. Again, the next one is going to be what? We have the previous the previous pattern and we're going to put one more and the next base must be four because the previous is three so the next base is going to be four. One, two, three, four. And this one must be ten. Now you can see one, three, six, ten in here. One, three, six, ten. Can you see? Is this. So those are going to be the triangle numbers. The tetrahedral numbers is just like the triangle numbers, but it's a little bit more complicated. I want to draw it. We have to visualize a tetrahedral in 3D, like this one in here. And the tetrahedral is like this. The first number, the tetrahedral is going to be here. So those are the triangular numbers. The triangular numbers. Now those are going to be the tetrahedral numbers. So as you can see, 1, 4, 10, 20. Can you see this image in here? So the first on the top is the 1. Then you add another layer with 3 more and you count those 3 with this 1. So we have 4. Now if you go to the third layer, we are going to have counting from the top 10 and so on. So on this uh, pattern here, we have uh, five layers, one, two, three, four, five. So there are 35 spheres in here. If you want to count, you can stop the video and count. 35 and so on. Now, the next uh, sequence is the Fibonacci number. And the Fibonacci number is very important. The Fibonacci number are used in many, uh, in basically everything. It's like a magical sequence. Uh, the Fibonacci number goes like this. This is a sequence. And you can see this sequence taking diagonals from this one. So the first diagonal that you can see is like this one. And this first number is just number one. Then you have another um, one which is going to be another one. Then if you look at this other diagonal is going to be 2 and if you add those in here you're going to find 3 and if you add those now we're going to have 5 and now add everybody in here you're going to have 8 and now you're going to have 13 and so on. Those are the Fibonacci numbers. Then you have the sum of diagonals and this is what I'm going to do in here. It's very interesting. Look, if we start counting from this part you count up to here. You can stop whenever you want to. But whenever you stop, you make only one turn. And this is so if you add those, you get those. Always. Uh, if you want to go even deeper, you can go uh, look, 1 and 8, 9. Um, 1 and 7, 8. Or, or if you want to do like this. Let's, let's, let's take this one for instance. Here. A bigger one. You add those. This is 35, 40, 50, 55, 56, the answer. The next one is 2 to the power r. r because it's the row. So the, the first row is 0. So 2 to the row 0 is 1. This guy. This is the first row. Row 0, row 1. 2 to the power of the row is going to be 2. We just have to count. One and one and one makes it two. Now this one. Two. Row zero, row, row one, row two. Two to the second power is going to be four. Two, three, four. Let's go to the 
two to the third, two to the fourth, because this is the fourth row. Well, two to the fourth is going to be what? 16, right? Let's see. Uh, this is 10, 15, 15, 10, sorry, 10, 11, 11, 15, and 1, 16. You just count everybody here, this is the answer. So if you, if you want to go 10 to the 9th, you're going to be in here. It must be 512. If you go to the 10th, 1024, and it should be this one. Now, this is another very interesting property. 11 to the power R, which is the row. So what is 11 to the power 0? One. Just read. This is the most impressive for me. Eleven to the first power. Eleven. You know, in here you have to count. In here we just read. One and one is eleven, isn't it? Now eleven to the second power, second row. One hundred and twenty-one. It is this. One hundred and twenty-one. <laughs> it's amazing. Eleven to the third power is going to be a thousand three hundred and thirty-one. Eleven to the fourth power is going to be, oh, this two is in here, okay, please. Now, 11 to the fourth, the fourth power is going to be 14,641, and so on. The other property are coefficients for a binomial expansion. Well, those coefficients, let's just write a binomial coefficient in here. Let's suppose we have a plus b to the second power. As we know, this is going to be a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Well, can you see the coefficient? 1, 2, 1 is in here. 1, 2, 1. Now, let's suppose you want to build a plus b cubed. So, it's going to be the first coefficient. Must, is, the coefficient is going to be 1, 3, 3, 1. So, this is going to be 1, a cubit, plus the next coefficient, 3. 3, a squared b to the first. Remember that the sum of those coefficients must always be 3. This is 3, b is 0. 3 and 0 makes a 3. Next, another 3. 3, a1, b2, you see, a3, a2, a1, and just go down, and this is b0, b1, b2, and the last coefficient is going to be 1, 1, b cubed, and so on. Let's suppose you want to build with the fourth power, this binomial to the fourth power, the coefficients are going to be, fourth power is this line, agree? Row number 4. Those are the coefficients. Let's suppose you want to know, like, this binomial to the seventh power. No problems. Those are all the coefficients. All the coefficients. And so on. Now, another interesting fact is you can rewrite this as combinations. As you know, the combination, like combination of seven being like three repetitions, you can write like this. Seven choose three. This is just 7 factorial divided by 4 factorial and 3 factorial. Well, how much is this? Let's just see this because I'm going to show you them. This is 7 times 6 times 5 divided by 6. This is 35, sorry. 35. We do have 35 there. So what is... 7 choose 3. Well, this is going to be the row 7, row 7, and the third element. 0, 1st, 2nd, 3rd. So this 35 can also be written like this. 7, 3. For instance, um, I can rewrite this 210 in combination notation. This is the tenth row. Ten. Choose zero. One, two, three, four, five, six. This would be 
Ten seven. Ten eight, and so on. So this would be, for instance, this three would be written. This is row three, right? Three, choose one. Why? Third row. Element one. Element zero. Element one, and so on. So combinations are in here. Another one you can use is square numbers. The square numbers are fantastic. I love this one. It's so amazing. Um, do you know what is four square roots? Of course, it is 16. You can see here, four square roots is going to be 16. Can you see? <laughs> what is five square roots is 25. Five square roots, 25. Another one. 7 square roots is going to be 49. Isn't it? 7 square roots, 49. Um, what is, for instance, 8 square roots? It's 64, isn't it? 64 is going to be the, the sum of those two. For instance, uh, what is 9 square roots? 81. If you add those, 70, 81. Amazing. So those are one of the brilliant things that I, I wanted to bring to you about the Pascal Triangle. I hope you have enjoyed um, everything that we discussed here. It's an amazing triangle, a magical one, discovered 300 years before Christ. Thank you very much for your patience, your presence. I hope you enjoyed. Please consider to subscribe to the channel and if you think it was worth it give it a like it's very important to give the like so youtube is going to pass this video to other people and other people are going to have the same pleasure as it is thank you very much and i see you next time bye bye